We've looked at the equations of motion. We're now going to apply those equations of motion to a specific scenario being projectile motion. And to clarify what projectile motion is, it's the motion of an object near the Earth's surface. And by um, stating that it's near the Earth's surface, what we're really saying, uh, well, the, the more significant aspect about that, um, is that uh, the only force acting on it is due to gravity. So there's no other external forces acting on the object um, and more specifically uh, we are going to treat air resistance as though it's negligible. Um, so uh, basically what we're saying there is that the effects of air resistance are so small that they don't really uh, have, an, have an impact on the motion or the trajectory of the object. Obviously if you think about uh, wind, uh, that's not entirely true. If you've got uh, wind around an object that's moving through the air, uh, that's definitely going to affect its motion, but uh, the easiest way to start is to imagine that air resistance is negligible. We actually won't get into treating air resistance as being significant. Um, that significantly complicates the, the analysis of motion, so we won't be covering that in this course. Um, so with projectile motion, there are a few uh, sort of subcategories that we're going to look at, um, and the first one is just falling. Um, I'll make a, a note for each of these subcategories as well. Um, first point to note is that near the Earth's surface, and this point um, is probably not just about falling, but um, applies to all, um, near the Earth's surface the acceleration due to gravity is basically constant. Um, it does vary across the Earth due to the, the fact that the Earth is in a perfect sphere um, and also due to um, uh, the, the density of material in the Earth itself uh, but we basically can treat it as um, constant and that value that you hopefully already are aware of um, is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, in the data booklet it actually lists it as 9.81 meters per second squared, so that's the value that we'll use here. Um, that basically means then if we're looking at um, the equations of motion there are a few things that we can um, identify. Um, first being that the value of A is now going to be uh, the value of acceleration due to gravity, which we use the symbol G for, um, and that's going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's our uh, constant acceleration. Sorry, just fix that up. Um, the second thing, if we're just dropping an object, um, so when we're talking about falling, we're usually going to imagine something sort of falling off a, a shelf or something's being dropped. Um, Dropping basically means that um, the initial velocity is going to be zero meters per second. Um, and the last point to note here is that um, uh, as everything, as it's falling, um, so with falling motion it's always down, then the direction's not particularly important. So we don't really need to worry too much about vectors in this case. Um, the um, the direction kind of becomes irrelevant. So considering direction um, isn't uh, particularly relevant or isn't particularly important, let's say that instead. Um, so we'll have a look at um, applying some equations to situations involving falling. Um, and I won't do any examples here, but um, we'll have a look at a few examples in class. Uh, so falling, they're the, the key things. Acceleration is due to gravity, so A is equal to G, which equals 9.81 metres per second squared. And if we're dealing with a situation where it's dropping, then um, uh, dropping something or falling off a shelf, then U would be equal to 0 metres per second. The second example is if we now actually have uh, something, something being thrown, and we'll call this one vertical projection. Um, and vertical projection will we'll generally sort of consider it being thrown upwards. Um, yes, you can throw something down, but generally speaking, if you're talking vertical, vertical projection, you're looking at up. Um, so the same as with falling, um, 
the acceleration due to gravity uh, is going to be the value of a so a is going to be equal to g which is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared um, the it's a, a point to note here that sometimes uh, confuses people um, and that is that even when the object is moving up uh, it's still actually accelerating down so you notice here we're now talking um, about directions and so we do need to consider the directions a bit more carefully here um, and so uh, what usually will be a good point uh, for these sorts of um, scenarios is to be very clear about the directions that you're dealing with so what you would usually do is define the direction that you're dealing with and an example of that um, um, so for example we might say something like let up be positive so that then means um, if we're going to um, again consider the equations of motion uh, the acceleration that we're dealing with as a vector is now going to be equal to the acceleration due to gravity and because we define up as being positive that acceleration is going to actually have a negative value so negative 9.81 meters per second squared um, if the object is thrown upwards as we said um, what that means is that um, the value of u so the vector uh, is going to be positive Um, another point of interest here now is the maximum height so the object's going to um, travel to a maximum height um, stop momentarily and then come back down so it's stopping momentarily means that the final velocity at that point is going to be equal to zero meters per second squared oh, sorry zero meters per second um, and finally um, another useful point to note uh, when the object return to it, returns to its um, original height or the height from which it was thrown so I'm going to use the word projected here um, so when it returns to the height from which it was projected so it won't always be thrown um, we can go through and show um, that the final velocity is going to be equal to the negative of the initial velocity so it has the same speed but it's now in the opposite direction um, and also associated with that if it's uh, returned to the same height then its vertical displacement will be zero meters as well uh, as I said we'll look at some um, example problems in class to to clarify some of the the ins and outs of using the equations of motion for uh, vertical motion uh, in the next video, we'll take it a step further and we'll start to bring horizontal motion into the you know, scenario as well.